It's official, everybody. We are entering the final stages of waiting for the next chapter of No Man's Sky. The Beyond update received its official ESRB rating not long ago, and Sean started posting cryptic messages on Twitter again. And of course, the fans, as always, are losing their minds with anticipation. I don't blame them because this is exactly what has happened many times before. That is why today we're going to dive right in with the latest info to see what this all means and how close we could be to an actual release date for beyond so make sure you hit that like button if you enjoyed this and let's get to it going over the actual esrb rating first as this is fresh out the oven and got an update literally yesterday or a couple of days back if you don't know why this is important let me just give you a brief history of what happened last year when we went through the exact same situation basically after the game got rated on the xbox which was the new platform it got released on at the time it took about a month and a half from that point for the next update to go live so quite a bit of waiting there was a period of four to six weeks of waiting back then which if it all went the same this year it will likely mean an early September release for the Beyond update which is unfortunately still technically qualifying as a summer release as the initial Beyond announcement pointed out and yes even September still qualifies as summer for some reason or at the very least that is what Google is telling me but you know honestly it's quite doubtful that this will take this long for the actual update to go live and in in fact, the time window might very well be smaller this time around and there are a few reasons for why I believe that. On one hand, because the game already received its ratings by the Australian and German commissions since the beginning of last month, so like quite a bit of time since then and on the other hand because Sean has started doing his cryptic tweets again which is something he did in the past as well so at the very least both of these indicate that we are in the final stages of waiting right before the beyond update goes live but now that you kind of know the gist of it let's go over what the rating actually says as this has been a source of information in the past as well and according to it and I quote this is a space exploration game in which players assume the role of a planetary explorer on a quest to reach the center of the universe. From a first or third person perspective, players travel between systems to explore alien worlds for resources, to upgrade equipment and to discover unique life forms. As players pilot spacecraft to different planets, they can engage in space combat against enemy ships and space pirates, combat is accompanied by laser fire and large explosions. While on the planet's surface, and this is important, players can use a variety of gun-like weapons and melee attacks to defeat alien creatures, human-like figures and robots. Ground battles can be frantic with frequent laser blasts, explosions and screen shaking effects and of quote. Notice the second last sentence in this paragraph, the one about using gun-like weapons and melee attacks to defeat human-like figures as this was a big point of discussion in the past as well mainly last year right before the next update got released if you compare this rating to the current PC and PS4 version of No Man's Sky that one didn't have or doesn't have the exact same text it's about 90% the same except for that one sentence which originally mentioned aggressive and non-aggressive alien creatures instead of the human-like figures and robots the new rating has this problem prompted a lot of player speculation about stuff like new humanoid NPCs on planet surface and other wild ideas which might very well still happen but in the end it's something that the game was described as before as well. Not many people actually paid attention to this minor detail but when the game got its Xbox re-release last year it received literally the exact same description for the specific platform back then as well. So this talk about fighting human-like figures on planets has come up in the past. Last year mainly before the next update went live and we kind of already know exactly how the game is about and uh, yeah we don't really have humanoid NPCs on planets unless you really want to qualify some of the procedurally generated creatures as humanoids some of them can indeed be spawned as well bipedal slash humanoids but I don't think it's the same thing that the players have been thinking about as in having Corvax or Gax 
or even Viking just roaming the planets randomly and all that kind of stuff, which would be cool, it might still happen, but this is definitely not an indication of that, as this was the case before, this is a rating that has existed before, that the game has received, it's just that the PC and the PS4 versions of No Man's Sky didn't get a re-release yet, so the old ESRB ratings from before 2016 were kept. That is why there's a discrepancy between the description of the ratings on the Xbox One and on the PC and the PS4 likewise. Obviously since 2016 a lot has changed, including of course the new stuff in the next update and along with it the text in the ratings as well, but only this year do the original platforms get a re-release to include all of the updates to date and the VR support, so that is why these platforms will get an updated rating as well, including the new text that wasn't there before. So yes, on the not so bright side, don't read too much into these descriptions unless something more substantial about them changes, but on the bright side, and this is something that I wanted to mention before, the new ESRB rating implies an imminent release date as other players as well as news outlets have also correctly considered, so I'm really excited about this one because this means we are in the final stages, final steps right before the Beyond update should drop. Anyway, going back onto the news at hand, Sean Murray began the month of August August in force with a few tweets that got a lot of people nervous at least in the past 12 hours or so from the time he posted them on Twitter. His latest one includes this one with a bunch of clocks starting to point out hours from 1 to 7 and some emojis next to them. I'm not going to lie, when I woke up this morning to see this, I got a bit nervous that I missed something, but it looks like it's not going to be the case. So he tweeted apparently at 1am UK time, which is exactly when the clock in the tweet starts, and players speculated that this could very well be a low-key hint that by 7am UK time there's going to be an announcement since that is also when the last clock indicates. Of course, it's now way past that and nothing was posted, so you would think that people did the most rational thing in this case and moved on as any reasonable human being would do in this kind of situation, right? Wrong, you're forgetting that this is the No Man's Sky community we're talking about, so obviously we moved the goalpost to 7pm, I mean what else could we do in this kind of situation? For the record, I'm just kidding, I don't think anything will happen by that time, and this cryptic message, at least to me, it kinda looks like somebody trying to say they're getting more and more anxious as time goes by and they're getting close to something. And in the case of big updates, Sean always mentioned how pressing these last few weeks and days before an update gets released can become. I wouldn't even exclude the possibility for the studio to be in some kind of crunch mode right now as we're getting closer and closer to the release, so I fully believe believe this is a way for Sean to express him being nervous about Beyond's launch as it's looming over his head pretty much at this point. But historically, he posted clocks before and very close to release dates or trailer announcements in the past, so it could very well be a combination of both of these. On one side, Sean might imply that he's getting nervous as the update is getting closer, and on the other side, he is also saying that it is close and we are going to get it sometime soon. This is likely the biggest update yet, by far the most ambitious with both virtual reality support and a full online upgrade and most probably a ton more content on top of that, so what else could a lead developer do in this case outside of just being nervous about it? Even in a recent interview from a week or two back, he talked about the difficulty VR has proven to be and he quoted, hugely challenging for the team, and yeah, that didn't stop them but it didn't mean that it was easy for them to implement this and likely took a very long time, which is why we're seeing the Beyond update not dropping as fast as Next did for example. He specified many times before that the studio always ends up wanting to add more in each update but never having enough time to do so, and we're talking about once per year updates that get massive features as it is, but that is something that I as a player don't mind at all, because these updates are already huge to begin with and give me plenty of time to enjoy the game and still anticipate the next one dropping within a reasonable amount of time and have even more cool stuff for me to do, so again, this is something that I really like like about this game, the fact that it always keeps me on edge about the cool new stuff that they bring. So what does this mean in terms of actual release dates? Well, it means that we still don't have a clue, but we are definitely getting very close. Rumor has it that August 16 would be a likely candidate for the update to go live, and this has been announced by a gaming news outlet since last month, and because it was unverified at the time, it kinda got catalogued as fake news 
but now players have reportedly called Sony's customer support who did confirm unofficially that August 16 is the release date but don't get your hopes up as this could very well be a placeholder date as it was the case many times in the past and players have even reported getting different answers depending which country they call in their local Sony support and nobody knows exactly when the update is going to go live except maybe for Sean Murray himself. But with that, I think we have covered all of the latest news, everybody. If you enjoyed this video, of course, as always, a thumbs up would be super appreciated. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, activate the notification bell, and I will see you guys next time. So, peace out.